Hello guys and welcome to episode 11 of my Total War Warhammer playthrough playing as the vampire counts on very hard difficulty and today it's time to raise a new army at Western Sylvania. We can actually upgrade to unlock the Terrorgeist and the Vargolf but we're not going to mainly because we can't actually build either, either of them yet even if we did have that building. So we're just going to recruit a new lord which will be probably Vlad von Karstein because he does have the siege attack attribute which is or attribute which is really useful so yeah we're going to recruit him it's uh, it's an amazing attribute to have actually for the vampire counts and we have got the mission successful for that that we got in the last episode which is going to give us extra unit experience for all recruits and then what we can do is recruit direwolves and uh, vargais which is cool so, in our technologies, we are working towards blood hunts, which will give us extra unit experience for all uh, units recruited from the forest building train or chain. Sorry, but um, we won't have that in time, unfortunately. Uh, I might just go up towards invoke animalist hunger, animal animalistic hunger, the extra melee defense and speed for Vargeist units. And then maybe we'll go for Master of the Swarm for extra piercing damage for fell bats, extra armor and melee defense. That seems like quite a nice idea, actually. Maybe we can make Vlad have a swarm of fell bats. Very cool. Very Either way, for now, we're going to recruit plenty of Vargeists. Uh, probably going to get yeah three units there. We might get a few units of direwolves, and we get a few units of fell bats. So they all have minus recruitment costs at the moment. So why not? And they all have the extra unit ranks for now, so we'll take advantage of that. And that's going to take up 10 slots. Then what we're going to do is move him towards Averheim. We'll pick up whatever goodies we can get there and move on. So that used up a lot less than I thought it would. Although we are going to need a lot of dark magic to recruit at Averheim using the raise dead. Actually, before I forget... Let's set him some followers, so we get the minus 7% raise dead cost, and we get the extra magic item drop chance. That's pretty nice, actually. We can give him the glittering scales. Can we give him a hand weapon? Yes, we can. Which one's good? Probably the giant blade. Uh, what else can we give you? Oh, we do have an extra casting item. The Book of Arkan. Extra melee attack and speed. Very nice. So that's going to make Vlad pretty good from the, from the get-go. Um, what does he actually have? Master of Beguilement, minus 46 melee attack, that's a hex, and he has the Invocation of Nehek, of course, because he's a vampire, and he has the Aura of Dark Grandeur, which is a minus 4 leadership to anything standing around him. Pretty awesome leader, that's for sure. Does he have any special quests? I didn't actually see that. We go to his skills. He has Blood Drinker. And he has the cast iron ring. Just having a look and reading what they do. Interesting. So one spreads vampire corruption. Much like the Sword of Unholy Power for Manfred. I would actually like to complete his other quest. Maybe once Burns finished in uh, Reichland, we can move him down to complete the quest for us. And then we can do the quest battle. Uh, but here we are, sieging Marienburg. Without further ado, let's jump in and uh, fight this one on the battle map. And here we are. So we are going to gamble for more wins as we do use magic quite a lot now. And we got quite a nice amount which is good. Let's start the deployment. I'm probably just going to march towards this gate. We are actually going to use the battering ram this time. I might indeed take the Sternsman forwards. 
uh, with that battering ram. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, in the meantime, we are going to keep all of our dire wolves in the forests here. Because we don't want them to be spotted and fired at by the towers before they can get through the gates. And then the rest of my units can just run up to the walls as they normally do. And climb ladders. Maybe I should get the zombies to push the battering ram. I mean, they're slow enough as it is. Yeah, we'll do that. Then at least the Sternsmen can get out of missile fire sooner than later. I'm going to actually uh, bunch these guys up so they don't take missile fire from that tower. Although I think these towers might be pretty strong. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, let's get the uh, corpse gut here. And we will start the battle. So let's get that battering ram to move towards the gate. Just going to set up these guys to run towards the walls. Okay, good stuff. The Sternsmen may as well be moving forwards. Are their towers even firing? I don't think they've moved units to their towers. Otherwise they would be firing. Interesting. Well, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> if they don't want to take advantage of their towers, then who am I to argue? I'd much rather see my men live a lot longer. Well, I say live. Animate. Probably a better word. Because they aren't alive already. There ain't no beating hearts in these skeletons, that's for sure. Okay, there's actually no missile forces on the walls either. So where's their army? Where is it actually gone? I'm pretty sure there was like... I guess it is just a garrison, isn't it? It's not actually that much of a big deal. I don't know, it just, it just felt like there should have been more defending the walls. Here's some missile forces finally. I'm actually going to just leave the Sternsmen by the wall. I'm actually I'm going to get the uh, Devils of Schwarzhafen to attack the hand gunners alongside the uh, skeleton spearmen. And uh, where's Manfred? I left him behind. I'm an idiot. Okay, so good stuff. Some more hand gunners coming up on the walls, only to uh, be attacked immediately by um, my crypticals. The feasters in the dusk coming up here and doing a lot of damage. Okay, so we've already routed the hand gunners on that side. I think what we're going to do is maybe come down onto the swordsman. The gatehouse is nearly destroyed, or at least the gate is. 60% damage. Got the corpse cart there, providing its area of effect. So that's good. Okay, let's attack the uh, the swordsman and not the halberdiers. Because the halberdiers will actually do damage to my Vargas. Okay, may as well be using some spells here. So what one do we have? We do have the Fate of Buna. Can we, like, double that? No, we can't. So we'll use the Fate of Buna there on the Swordsman. It's going to be a nice set area of effect damage done there. I'm actually going to make these skeleton spearmen have the buff of Aspect of Dread Knight. And can we... No, we can't. Alright, we can get the zombies and we can get Manfred through the gate. May as well be using Master of the Black Arts. Actually, I guess I could do... Uh, 
don't know if that's really going to uh, count all of them. No, I think it just counted the, uh, the Sternsman there. It didn't actually affect the guys on the walls. Right, so let's get a couple units to run down to those hand gunners. The rest can engage the halberdiers. Uh, we can, of course, get our die walls to run forwards towards the halberdiers now. And up on the wall here, we may as well be engaging. So let's uh, actually get these crypt ghouls to run down into the center square. Whilst the uh, skeleton warriors move up to attack the swordsmen. So we're going to ramble into the walls now with the zombies and so on. Let's get inside here with everything we got. So the Crypt Ghouls engaging the Halberdiers. going to get the uh, Black Knights to charge through the gates as well. Here come all the Dire Wolves. Some zombies is walking around as well. The Tithe doing their best. That's just crazy. Like the amount of units just coming through the gate there. Just flooding through. Meanwhile, little resistance left on the walls. That's for sure. Or some great sword infantry. Okay, we didn't actually do that much damage to them. They will probably start doing a lot of damage to my Black Knights. I'm just going to try and break off there where I can. We'll get the Sternsmen to engage them instead. I may as well get these units around to help out. So these uh, Sternsmen, they actually have regeneration, which is nice. Over here, the Black Knights are going to be running down the hand gunners nicely. On the walls, we just need to take care of those halberdiers. The Devils of Schwarzhafen did actually take quite a lot of damage, but we're okay. And once uh, the Black Knights are done there, we're going to move and attack the Great Sword Infantry. We'll charge them in the butt. It looks like we won't need to. As that is victory. We're going to end the battle there. And Marienberg is ours. 295 losses. Not too many at all. 204 kills for the Vargeists. That's very nice. Loads of loot gained. And wow. I'm actually quite tempted to sack that. Yeah, I think we're going to sack it. Because then we can move back into friendly territory, replan, and then go back and attack again. I actually completely forgot to buy the Koenigstein walkers, didn't I? Or stalkers. Yeah, and next time we'll just go back and we'll siege Marienberg again. Awesome. And then we'll um, probably loot and occupy. Maybe sack and occupy, or just maybe just occupy. It depends how much money we'll get. Because they'll probably uh, repair at the end of this turn, so maybe we'll get actually quite a lot of cash. We may as well make use of the cash we just got. Uh, maybe if I move into Wissenland next turn, we can upgrade a couple of these to uh, Shady Townships. And we can also upgrade the Balefire Hearth. Ready? Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll probably save the cash for now. Uh, Vlad von Karstein is still buying those units. Sibyl is on his way. Uh, I think I might actually embed Sibyl in Hamlin's army, although we could try and assassinate some of these Marienberg agents. We'll see. We'll see what I want to do in the next turn. <laughs> over at Essen. I think we're going to start work on the Balefire Brazier. Just because I want to start spreading as much vampiric corruption in this province before we take Bechirfen. 
everything's fine at Western Sylvania. I'm tempted to upgrade uh, Castle Tempelhof to an Akers City so that we can get the extra building slot. But I'll probably wait until the Necromancer does the rounds. In the meantime, we'll end the turn. And it's really good that we have so much cash. It's really, really nice. Dwarf Ruin. Be at war with Clan Angrand. I have a feeling that might be quite easy. Let me go into this and we will talk to Clan Angrand. What do they own? They are strength rank 15. They don't have any allies. I think they only control one or two provinces. They have Kalak Aizor and Kalak Buftar. Oh, they also have Kalak Angazar. So that could be pretty easy. We may as well wipe them out so they that stops uh, the dwarves getting a confederation there. How are the dwarves doing over here? I can actually check their strength rank. They're strength rank 5 now. The greenskins are strength rank 7. So they're catching up. And it looks like the dwarves might not be having a great time down there. Hopefully they're not because that's key to victory in the Vampire Counts campaign. It's really irritating have to, having to attack outside your own lands. <laughs> like It's fair enough just like on a border province. But like when you go like beyond one province away, you just take so much attrition, it's ridiculous. And you need to have armies that can deal with that. So let's move back and sack Marienburg. Uh, looks like we're going to have to do a siege again, so we'll just let that happen, that's fine. No worries there. Um, here at Reichland, we can actually upgrade to another Shade Township, so we'll do so at Eilhart, I think Grunberg's probably the safest at the moment. And then we'll move Burned into Wissenland. And then next turn, we can upgrade a lot of stuff there. This turn we can't because he's not deployed. I really, really want to be able to recruit more Necromancers. Because the minus 20% construction cost is just too good. And the bloody... Um, vampire counts buildings cost so much just for like nothing as well they're so overpriced it's ridiculous so let's try and assassinate someone with Sibyl critical success amazing good stuff so we're gonna go for spy and then we'll go for assassin and we'll get the extra assassination chance and we'll probably just keep using Sibyl to assassinate Really good for like weakening armies before you attack them, and also uh, good for just killing agents that are being a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm not sure what other skills you can get. You can get harassment, um, minus three attrition when under siege, uh, extra income from buildings, uh, infiltrate is the spoiler, minus income from enemy buildings. We can get infiltrated to damage walls. Honestly, there's not actually many other good skills. Maybe we should uh, make them an assassin and then we will put them in the army and then bring them out when we want to kill annoying agents. Yeah, that might be a better idea. So Hamlin's just chilling still. We're trying to sort out the public order in Reichland. But everything is done for this turn, so let's move on to the next one. Now what I feel the main issue with like generic nations in Warhammer is like for example the Empire and the Vampire Counts and the Dwarves and uh, even with like Clan Angren for example you have like so much like micromanagement with all your provinces like building all of these different buildings all the time that it can get pretty slow on each turn and I'm sorry about that so just yeah I just wanted to say but either way leader of the pack is done so we're gonna get invoke animalistic hunger for the buffs to the Vargeists and I guess we're going to safeguard. We don't need the extra 3,000. We're going to get the extra vampiric corruption. That's actually really, really useful. Burned can deploy this turn. Actually, I probably should have moved him again. Never mind. Uh, we are going to uh, unlock the shady townships. And then we'll upgrade the Balefire Hearth and the Gallows. May as well upgrade the Tombstone Maker. That should help sort out the public order. 
in this province by increasing the vampiric corruption even more and also just the extra two public order from the gallows. So our income should start to decrease considering we are actually getting some more units finally. Oswald has leveled up so I guess what we're going to do is the Restless Dead just to get the extra campaign map movement range. Really good for when we actually decide to move them out. Uh, I may as well go for the uh, Shady Township there even though we don't have the uh, minus construction cost. A Castle Drakenhof. Like I do want to get an ancient armory but I'm also tempted to save and build the uh, Vampire Crypts or the Forbidden Library. I think we'll actually go for the Forbidden Library because then I can actually get another Necromancer. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then we can upgrade Castle Drakenhof again very soon and then get the Armory. And then what we'll do is build the Vampire Crypts at Templehof. That's the plan. Yeah, so we'll wait one more turn for our cash. Um, Marienburg is under siege, that's fine. We can't attack. Actually, we can. Of course we can. Okay, so we're just going to auto-resolve that one. Um, I may as well loot and occupy, I think. Yeah, that's fine. And we have the Marienburg docks there. It's going to give us extra income. And then we are going to go for the Balefire Brazier. Good stuff. So Gorsal was the other settlement in the wasteland. Colon is owned by Marienburg, but it looks like it's under attack or under siege or something. So we're just going to try and sort out the public order in Marienburg sooner than later, but in the meantime we've upgraded or leveled up Manfred, so... I guess we'll get uh, the purple son of Zerus. And we can try that out in battle. Right, Hamlin, you can just stay where you are. Oswald's going to stay where he is, since we are upgrading the settlement here now. And uh, Sibyl, you can try and assassinate another chappy here. Okay, the uh, action success chance is too low. Let's just uh, deploy then for this turn. And that will reduce the income that Middenland get. That will be incredibly irritating if like, you're another player, for example. And I was going to use cash for something, wasn't I? But uh, we'll wait for next turn and then... Yeah, I was going to use the cash that I used for the Shady Township to build the Forbidden Library, wasn't I? But we'll wait one more turn and just do it then. So let's move on again. So Marienburg would like a peace treaty. Maybe I can get some cash out of them. It'll probably be worth it. Oh, no, we can only get 2,000 2, out of them. So we'll probably just destroy them. We'll, we'll go and raise their settlement if they're still alive. Although it looks like they might have just been destroyed anyway. Yeah, Baston to Colon. So that means that Marienberg are roaming currently. I don't think they have any provinces unless that's a province up there. Oh, okay, so they own Dieter Schäfen. Maybe we do want a peace treaty because that's just going to get annoying otherwise. Yeah, we'll take as much money as we can. What? Really? Okay. We can't barely get any money from them. I still think it's worth getting a peace treaty. Let's just see how much money we can get for it though. There we go, that'll do. 
Yeah, because we're probably going to attack uh, Middenland next. So that we can get Gorsal and finish off the Marienberg province and then we'll get Middenland maybe. I don't know, I kind of want to focus on the uh, the Wood Elves next. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, we are going to probably start working on the Forbidden Library, although I ideally want to get burned over there. It's going to take, what, four turns, though? Don't know if that's worth waiting for. Maybe it is. Maybe we can just build some stuff on the way. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think we'll wait. Has Oswald sorted out this province yet? <laughs> no, it's still minus eight. <laughs> yeah, goddamn. He's literally been sat there the whole game. Okay, so, Sibyl. Do you want to try this again? That was a failure. Well, at least we got some experience. Yeah, we're just going to chill. We're just going to chill out. Why not? I know it's not the most exciting gameplay, but it kind of has to be done. Alright, so we'll attack this guy now. Another failure, but we did level up. So we'll go for extra assassin chance. Or assassination chance. And, well, Bend can move towards Castle Drakenhof. We will deploy in this turn in Averheim. And we may as well upgrade Averheim to an accursed city. And we'll upgrade the gallows while we're there. And also the Urnmaker's Pottery at Grenstad. I think we're just going to go for the corpse pile. Yeah, that uh, seems like a good plan. Since that's uh, where we break through to the border princes. Uh, Vlad von Karstein has finished recruiting all of his men, so let's march him towards Averheim now. Can't raise anything on the way by the looks of things, so we'll just leave him as it is, or as he is. <laughs> Been talking for way too long. <laughs> Okay, again, I'm just going to have to leave it as it is. It's really quite annoying. The uh, vampiric corruption is slowly climbing in Reichland. And once it gets high enough, we might be able to leave with yes. Hamlin. How much is Hamlin actually providing? Oh, he's only providing plus five anyway. Okay, so he can move on. Manfred... I don't think can move on at all. No, minus 20. He's providing 20 military presence uh, in public order there. But Hamlin can move on, so that's something. So maybe we'll get Hamlin to move towards Helmgar, and we'll get Vlad and Hamlin to move over and attack the Wood Elves. Let's have a look at what sort of strength rank we're going to be dealing with. Strength rank 1, of course. <laughs> And what strength rank the wo are we? <laughs> oh, we're strength rank two. Okay, so that's not too bad. <laughs> I was I was very scared, and I was like, this isn't going to go too well. But considering it's quite early in the game, that's that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to have to get uh, Oswald to actually leave Essen eventually and, and join us. But I think uh, Vlad and his new army, once he recruits from Averheim, we should be perfectly fine. Let's actually move on to the next turn straight away and we'll see what we can get from there. Okay, so that's done. Do we want the migration? 
Probably not. We will tell them to big on. And, um... Yeah, we'll move down as far as we can. Not into Fildorf, but... And then we'll see what we can recruit. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. We can get some badass units. We're definitely taking the Vargolf. We're definitely taking the Mortis engine. Then what we need is a bunch of skeletons. Probably the Crypt Horrors. We need quite a nice chunky front line. So we've got three units. We can recruit seven more. We don't need the Vargais. I don't think we need Black Knights in this army. We'll probably go for Khanrays, Grave Guard, and then maybe Crypt Ghouls and some Skeleton Warriors. Or maybe Skeleton Spearmen because they last a bit longer. Yeah, we'll go for Skeleton Spearmen. That is a badass army. Not so sure about these fell bats, but we'll see how it goes. Like with all these fell bats and bargeists like working together, they can just crush units like so quickly. It's gonna be exciting to see how that does. Especially against like um wood elf armies. This is actually a fantastic army. Because the Mortis Engine can buff our melee forces against their strong, like, Wildred Rangers, even if they have them. They probably don't uh, yet. And then we can have Direwolves, Felbats, and Vargeist just, like, chasing down their ranged units. So that's going to be super, super fun. I'm really excited to use this army. Um, I'm tempted to actually go to war with Clan Angren first and wipe them off the face of the Earth. They do control Kalak Buftar, so that's going to be something. I'm not entirely sure. I think we'll leave that decision making till the next episode because unfortunately it's been my time. I'm incredibly tired, as you may be able to tell. But uh, there we go. That's it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>